Understanding mental disorders is certainly an important step in dealing with them, but that's only part of it. One of the primary goals of clinical psychologists and researchers is to develop treatments that will lessen the effect of disorders. Treatment options are almost as diverse as the disorders they're designed to treat. Different disorders don't necessarily require different types of therapies, but in general, it really depends on the individual and what kind of therapy they're going to respond to. The success rate of therapy really depends most on the individual's personality and how well they get along with their therapist. Certain disorders benefit certainly from perhaps trying different approaches, such as combining drug therapy with other types of either psychotherapy or cognitive behavioral therapy. But in general, there's no one-size-fits-all therapy prescription for any kind of mental disorder. It's really about trying out which different kinds of therapies re you respond to and which seem to fit your personality best. Psychoanalysis has a rich history, uh, it began with Freud, and in psychoanalysis the focus is really on helping the patient to uncover uh, events and conflicts and issues that may have occurred when they were children, particularly during psychosexual development. And these are issues that typically are manifesting themselves in the person's adult life and causing issues and conflict for them. And typically in psychoanalysis, the patient meets with their therapist about three times a week. It's long term, it's intensive, and in those cases the therapist ask, acts mainly as a vessel to get the person to uncover those kind of latent issues and see how they can resolve that in their adult life. In contrast, with psychodynamic therapy, the therapist plays more of an active role. So there's still a focus on uncovering issues from early years of life that may be causing difficulty for the adult and trying to manage that conflict and, and resolve it in adult life. But in psychodynamic therapy, the therapist plays more of an active role in engaging with their client and asking appropriate questions and directing the conversation and helping them to resolve any conflicting statements between the way they might feel as an adult versus how they said they felt as a child. Humanistic therapy is founded on the belief that a lot of mental disorder or mental struggles come from the fact that as humans we may be alienated or feel like we lack fulfillment uh, or meaning in our lives. And in humanistic therapy, the belief is that people are their own agents of change and that people have the ability uh, to change their own mental, mental well-being for the better, that we're all responsible for that, and in particular that clients take an active role in their own mental health and in improving their mental health. So in humanistic therapy, the approach of the therapist is generally a lot more removed. They won't necessarily steer the client towards the right answer, the right direction, but instead really rely on the client to take that responsibility. Humanistic therapy also um, assumes that in a lot of cases the, the client would benefit from accepting and feeling free to be themselves. And that a lot of our pressure and unhappiness that we bring upon ourselves is because we feel like we shouldn't have certain emotions like anger or jealousy. Uh, when in reality those are normal emotions to have and it's all about how you manage those emotions. And so in humanistic therapy the emphasis on, is on helping the client to accept those emotions and feel free to be themselves and accept those emotions as well. Behavior therapy is focused on unlearning maladaptive behavioral patterns that may be contributing to the mental disorder or distress. So for instance, you might, um, if you have a phobia of spiders, one way to get over that is by desensitizing yourself. And so behavior therapy might have you uh, consistently expose yourself to spiders over and over again so that you become desensitized. And thus, that anxiety reaction or the behavior of feeling an, an anxious reaction is essentially lessened over, over time by exposing yourself to that fear object. Cognitive behavioral therapy is based on the idea that cognitive processes affect both our emotions and our behaviors. And so in many cases with cognitive behavioral therapy, the focus is on trying to unlearn kind of biases that we may have in our cognitive thinking and change the way we might frame certain situations or the way we think about events and activities in our life. So rather than perceiving something as being potentially threatening or anxiety provoking, CBT really focuses on unlearning those kinds of negative thoughts thought patterns and changing them to be more positive, reframing essentially how you see certain situations so that the emotions that follow from those thought patterns are more constructive, more adaptive. 
Drug therapy has become relatively more common in recent years, and this is typically when an individual uh, might be suffering from a more severe form of a mental disorder and seek treatment, and often these are prescribed by a psychiatrist. They could also be uh, prescribed by someone's general practitioner as well. And um, in many cases, drug therapy can be very useful for helping people have, uh, be able to maintain a normal quality of life and live with their family and friends and still function. Um, whereas traditionally in the past, it might have involved staying in a hospital for a longer period of time. Now with drug therapy, we've made tremendous advances in how we treat mental disorders. For most patients that benefit from drug therapy, the optimal treatment is some combination of both the drug therapy as well as traditional therapy so that they can both treat the symptoms at an immediate level, uh, but then also be developing coping skills that they'll be able to use in the long term to cope with uh, the issues. Although identifying the most effective combination of therapy techniques may be a challenge and require some experimentation, the wide range of options is encouraging. Many people who have sought treatment for mental disorders find that therapy reduces or eliminates the effects of the disorder and enables them to live normal, productive lives. If you think that you or someone you know has a disorder, the most important thing is to get diagnosed and to seek treatment with a trained psychologist.